everybody, Rob Nelson here. We are in the mountains of Colorado, and I wanted to share with you a couple of best practices for when you're shooting photos with your drone. All right, let's get started. In particular, today I'm going to walk through the process I've used on well over a thousand flights. I'll show you what I'm thinking as I set the settings on my drone and start taking images. I'm here at sunrise because some of these settings are really more important at times like this than say a bright sunny midday shot. And you can also get a lot of great shots at this time. All right, first things first, make sure you're always shooting raw. That gives you a lot of control later. There's just not as much info stored in a JPEG image. And that means setting your white balance, which I usually leave on auto, is not really that vital. Another setting, which you can change later if you're shooting raw, is your profile. For me, I usually just leave it at standard for this reason. Now, onto the more important parts. One of my main goals just before sunrise is to make sure that the ISO is not that large. And that's because it's not that bright right now. Now, the larger the ISO, the grainier the shot. So that means you're gonna have to adjust the shutter here to get the proper exposure. And now for taking the shots. I like to use auto exposure bracketing for my landscape shots. That's AEB mode right here. And I usually choose five, but you could also do three. And if you're shooting three, that's one normally exposed, one above and one below. In post, that gives you this range right here. In Lightroom, you can highlight those, right click on the mouse and choose HDR. And that's just a really good way to expose for the sky and the foreground. You know, I prefer doing it this way than doing it in the drone because I feel like Lightroom has a little more ability to merge those images. In addition to this exposure stuff, I like to shoot multiple shots at the same exposure as well. The reason for that is you could, if you wanted to, reduce the noise later. And you may not use this at first, but as you get more advanced in some of your editing programs, you could use it. I've gone back to photos that are 10 years old and used this technique. You see in Photoshop, it has some great features where you can stack a bunch of these images like this, and then you could choose to say, find the mean of those multiple images in the stack. I found this to be a really neat trick to get rid of the pixelation on noisy images. But I'm just gonna leave it at that because that's not what this video is about. Next tip, shoot panoramic shots. Now I didn't do this for a long time, but I've started to a lot lately. And that's because simply a pan down sometimes gives a really neat effect, especially say at a sunrise like this. And all you do to accomplish this is you take multiple shots with overlap as you're panning down or left or right. I usually do about 50% overlap. Then in Lightroom, you select them, you right click and you choose photo merge panorama. Now I did it here for a really nice vertical shot. I also did it a little further with the canyon below to give this shot. Finally, even though the sun is here, don't forget to turn the drone around and shoot the other way too. Sometimes that's the best shot in my opinion anyway. At this time of day, you can get some beautiful soft light and you get amazing shadows like these on the mountains. Okay, those are my introductory tips and best practices for shooting photos with your drone. The biggest tip is to get out there and start taking shots. The more drone pictures you shoot, the better. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. I hope some of those tips about drone photography were useful for you. I'm gonna give a big shout out to Amos Volts, who essentially reached out to me and said, hey, let's do a little bit of a collaboration. I do a lot of drone photography and uh, maybe I could give you some tips and you could share on your channel, which is exactly what I'm doing. It allowed me to come out here in the mountains and share some of these with you. So I'm gonna leave links to his work down here and into the description. And we'll see you next Tuesday.